Hello, love. Welcome to your soul support message. These are messages for the highest and the greatest good of the Elsh Collective. Empaths, light workers, star seeds, and healers, those of you, those of us here on a mission for a deeper understanding of why we're here and to expand consciousness for awakening souls. Know that these messages, whenever they find you or you find them, that there is a message in them for you. That is always the intention of these messages. Before I get into the reading, I have a little announcement to make. This is going to be the last message that I post going forward every day. So there's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, I'm going away um, and where I am going, I don't know because of just the circumstances physically will not be able to post every day between, you know, computer connections and travel and all that stuff. The second reason is I've noticed that these readings are getting longer and they're going in a, a slightly different direction. They're evolving. They're evolving. And doing them every day, I feel as though they need some space to breathe. They need some space to breathe. So going forward, I will be uploading and scheduling to upload certain shorts and things like that based on the readings that I've already uh, posted here. And when I do get a chance and an opportunity while I am away, which I'm really not away, I'm always here, <laughs> while I am traveling, okay, um, if I do get an opportunity to post, and there are some places that I'm going to be visiting where I would actually love to um, first and foremost, see if these places would be willing and open to me doing a reading while I am there. Um, perhaps to kind of translate or, or share the messages or the energies with you. Um, I will be, you know, um, taking video of certain things and either posting them as I, as I take the video or doing it once I get back, okay? But just know that there's gonna be probably about a two week period here, just a little over two weeks where I won't be posting every day as I have been. I might be posting every two, three days, depending on if, if, it, if that's available to me. Um, and going forward, I think what I want to focus on, and I would love your feedback on this, is to do three or four readings a week, um, focusing on different energies that want to come through, of course, and perhaps um, expanding that to certain topics, which I'm curious, again, if those of you who are already here subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for being here so grateful that you're here and i would love to also get some kind of feedback from you as to maybe there are things that you are curious about things that you would like to know more about that we can share here and that i can learn about too right through doing these messages so that is my little announcement and now we're going to get into the message okay the energies of buddha and Jesus Christ coming through for this message, the energies of the Buddha and Christ consciousness, depending on how you want to look at it, okay? Um, they want me to keep it really simple. And um, Jesus Christ, Christ conscious, consciousness energy is wanting to work with rose quartz again. And I love that. Because these are, I'm curious to see, they didn't really get too much into it when I started the meditation. But what they showed me was the two of them sitting in unity next to one another. Almost as if they were the same person. Um, and there are many interesting um, interpretations of that, right? In terms of Christ's consciousness and Buddha and the Buddha and the teachings of the Buddha. Um, and they showed me a four-leaf clover, clover, a four-leaf clover, and they said, 
luck is what you make it. You make your own luck. And this was a reading I did. I don't even remember how far back it was. It was on my Instagram. Uh, before I stopped on Instagram and then kind of started again, but really on this channel, that was sort of the, the impetus for me going back there. That's besides the point. But what I'm getting at is that it was so far back. Um, so they're going to they're gonna want to talk about this. And I have no idea. I don't even really remember what had come through in that reading. Um, but, but what they showed me was very similar. So I'm curious to see how that's evolved. And there's some connection here with loving yourself, self-love, bringing in these energies of the Rose Quartz, unity, unity of divine masculine and divine feminine energies, and making your own luck. Something here about alignment. That's sort of what they're pointing to. They want to show that when you are align in alignment with source energy, when you are in alignment with your heart, when you are in alignment with your true self, it's as if you make your own luck. That's what they're, that's what they're wanting to say. So I'm asking through the light seers tarot, messages of soul support coming through around these particular focal points of energy, really around making your own luck, about being in alignment with self. So we've got the Page of Cups. Now take a look at the imagery on this Page of Cups. This, this deck is so cool. <laughs> this deck is just like, it's like his higher self, right? Okay. It's about it being, <laughs> and of course the pig is flying in the corner there. You see that? What is the bowl? The bowl looks like a singing bowl. It's really, yeah. And then there's a heart. You see that right here? Page of Cups. Yeah. Imagination is what they're showing me. The power of imagination. You know, let me keep on shuffling. The power of imagination. The power of visualization. This They really want to focus on connection to your higher self and the embodiment of your higher self. Just look at that imagery right? And how that feels. What does that feel like is what they're asking here because this is cups. So this is emotional energy, the emotional body. What does it feel like for you to embody your higher self? And that's the starting point for making your own luck, so to speak. We've got the Knight of Cups coming out in reverse. Okay, so what they're what they want to acknowledge is that there are people in this collective, there are souls in this collective that are feeling disconnected from that, and that's why they want to come in for this message. They want to come in to give you some kind of support, some pointers, some tips, you know, like <laughs> crack me up. King of Cups. Look at all this cup energy. King of Cups. So just take a look. We've got, we've got pretty much, I mean, with the exception of the Queen of Cups, she hasn't shown up. But if you look at these energies, well, they came out like this for me, where it was like, am I holding this correctly? No. This looks like that. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. It's like they're saying that this energy of feeling, um, not knowing where to go, feeling kind of like, it's not exactly blocked. It's like a stagnancy is what they're, what they're feeling. I'm feeling it in the solar plexus. So there's something here about, um, feeling like your willpower has kind of tapped out, feeling kind of stuck, knowing that you, Knowing full well, recognizing the fact that you have a higher self, everyone does, right? And that, let's say you connect with your higher self in meditation, but then when you leave meditation, 
you go about your day and then you're doing things and you're like, why am I so out of whack? Like, why do I feel so out of whack? Why is it so difficult to apply those things to my day-to-day -day life? The things that I feel, the things that I know, the things that I'm learning in when I'm in meditation, how I feel, how I feel when I'm connected to my higher self. Why is it that and then I go about my day and I'm in the quote unquote 3D and I'm, you know, going to the bank. <laughs> I was just there actually, going to the bank, um, going to uh, like the supermarket, going out into the mall, for example, interacting with people, right? And you feel, you, see, you hear yourself saying things where you're like, that's not really me anymore. And I don't even know why I just said that. Okay, what they really want to point here to is that as empaths, we do this because um, we, we are geared, is what they're showing me, to relate to people. We're geared to be that way. So when someone is kind of like coming at you with a certain consciousness, you are very quick to empathize with that. And that's part of why you might find yourself saying things where you're like, did I just seriously say that to that person? Like, I know better. I know better. And they really don't want you to be so hard on yourself because the whole point of going through those experiences is to grow into this form of emotional mastery as an empath. I mean, this King of Cups is just absolutely freaking vibing. It almost looks like he is floating on the water here, just like Jesus walking on water, right? And he is completely embodying his higher self in this image. He feels lighter. He is attuned to the energies because that bowl is like a sound bowl, again, which is so interesting because it's totally connected to this sound bowl here. There's a connection here, right? So this is embodied. And that interestingly enough, the process of getting there is to go through these kind of like discombobulations again of, did I just freaking say that again? Oh my God. Yeah, it's part of the process. It's all part of the process and we need to, we really need to stop being so hard on ourselves. And they want me to bring the rose quartz back in. This is about self-love. This is about coming back to being gentle, on yourself, knowing that opportunities like this are just another chance for you to love yourself even more, okay? Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, Three of Swords. You see how in this figure, this woman is still tethered to this energy? She's still tethered to this heartbreak, to this opening and of, of this heart, right? Okay, so there's a double message here of how these type of experiences, they split you open and they are painful. And this is in any relationship is what they're showing me. This is not just romantic relationship for this reading. What they're showing me is that these experiences of you in a way, it's crazy. They're showing me like you breaking your own heart. Ugh. They're showing me you breaking your own heart, being so hard on yourself. Um, and that, funny enough, you doing that is actually an opportunity for you to even, to love even more because a heart that is cracked and open is open, is what I wanna say, right? It's It's like, a heart that's cracked is an open heart. And an open heart is an opportunity to receive even more love. I want them to just kind of, yeah, look what's look what comes up next, right under the deck, the Four of Swords. And look, the heart is connected here. Oh yeah, and then Justice too, I'll show that in a second. So. You see how that heart is tethered there? What a beautiful message. This is this is self-care right here. 
and it's the swords. So this is also about how are you speaking to yourself? They're reminding me of the fact that we have to love ourselves the way that we would love our own child, our own baby, our own fur baby. The, the people we love most in our lives, those who are dearest to us. Because justice is coming up here at the bottom of the deck, okay? Balance, rebalancing these energies. Um, this is also Libra's card as well. So this is about learning through those relationships again. And that was coming through yesterday's message as well. There's always that thread, right? There's always that beautiful thread. So they want to also say here too, I'm going to finish off with this particular message because what's really interesting about this card is that you see the shadow and the light in this person. If I turn it around, you see a more like the, and I don't mean when I say shadow here, I don't mean bad, right? I mean, you see the energy of this person who has to go through the hardships, who needs to experience the things, who, who faces their own demons, right? In a sense. And I love how you see that this is integrated. It's a part of who this person is, right? But they are very, very well aware of when they start to get out of whack, when they're being too hard on themselves, right? And also discerning for yourself, because I taught, because this is something that, this is something that also happens with empaths too. And this could be a whole other topic for a reading as well. Empaths can also be really good at enabling themselves because they do it to others. And sometimes as empaths, we can actually get too caught up in this kind of energy and victimhood consciousness and not step into the self-care and the mastery. See how contrasting these images are? And this is one of the things I love so much about tarot because it gives you a visual and everybody's gonna interpret this how they're gonna interpret it. It's activating in so many different ways to different souls, right? So we have to be really aware I just, I love that this is coming up here because to me, the just, justice card is also discernment. Very similar. The justice card in tarot is very similar to the judgment card. And it's really, that could be a whole lesson in and of itself, right? And look, we've got the bowls again, kind of like the singing bowls here, right? Same thing going on with those bowls. It's about balancing and knowing, knowing yourself. I think essentially that's really what I'm trying to get at here is it's knowing yourself. It's knowing every aspect of yourself and embodying that higher self, integrating those energies, right? Bringing them together to be discerning, to know when you are being too critical of yourself, to know when maybe you're giving yourself too much slack. I mean, um, a really quick example of this is when we become avoidant with things, when we know we need to face something emotionally and we don't. So we decide we're going to go eat a pie or we um, end up in a fight with someone or we fall into victimhood consciousness and um, feel really, really sorry for ourselves. Those are all manifestations of when we are not fully embodying how we are feeling and facing that, facing that, looking at it straight in the face, right? It's funny because the energies of justice feel that way to me. Justice is about you, you looking something in the face and being discerning and judging it in a discerning way with awareness, with all your faculties present, right? Um, and also embodying the truth of what 
you feel too through your higher self for you, right? What is your truth in this particular situation? How do you feel? But also being discerning about perhaps where you may be making certain wrongs and remedying them, right? And facing them and acknowledging them and accepting them and then making the changes that you need to make, right? Moving forward. Yeah, that's what it's all about. They want me to end on this. Hold up the rose quartz. <laughs> Take care of yourself, okay? This beautiful heart is so precious. It is so precious. And they're actually, what they're showing me is literally like us sitting in meditation, putting your hand on your heart, closing your eyes, breathing into this energy, breathing into yourself, finding your higher self through this heart. Yeah, your heart is a portal. That's, your heart is a portal to your higher self, your highest timeline. The guidance system that you came here built, like built in with, to know what to do next, okay? To know how to heal. Yep, this is all about knowing yourself. Okay, I'm going to end it there. Thank you to the Buddha, the energies of the Buddha and Jesus Christ and Christ consciousness for being here for this reading. Thank you for being here with me, sharing this space with me, this sacred space, your time, your energy. I'm sending you so much love wherever you are. In love and liberation always.